Good evening, family of the Most High God. Welcome to our prayer session for tonight. Glory be to God. We are the children of the Most High God. We are blessed and highly favored. We are loved by our Father who watches over us day in, day out. And He makes sure we are ready for each day, ready for each endeavor, preparing us for the life in abundance to the full and overflow. And each day we receive a message, we receive something that we need, something that is important, something that is prepared for us because we definitely would not succeed without the word that is given us that is revelation knowledge. And today we have another message from the Lord, a message in season, a word in time, a word of empowerment. But before we start, let us pray. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for another opportunity to give us to receive the wisdom from Jehovah, the wisdom from the mighty creator of heaven and earth. Thank you so much, Father. We look forward to the revelation knowledge that transforms our lives, that improves us into becoming better versions of ourselves, individuals who profit out of the word, individuals who look up to Jehovah and trust in their Father and are led by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father Lord. Bless your holy name, glorify you in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Where we have missed the mark, Father, we have lost, we have transgressed against you, Father. We are ashamed of our works and we ask forgiveness of our sins and we repent of those sins. We ask you to wash us clean with the blood of Jesus, making us whiter than snow and also renew our minds so that there are no wounds on our souls, but we are prepared to walk tomorrow by faith and not by sight, living holy lives in Jesus Christ's mighty name. May there be no darkness in us, but us be filled with the light of the Lord, having nothing come on the kingdom of darkness. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Thank you, Father Lord, Holy Spirit, once again. We are expectant of a very powerful sermon. We give us a waiting season, a waiting time, a word of empowerment that empowers us to be who we are expected to be by our Creator the Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Thank you, Father Lord. Amen. Today we have a teaching titled Faith without fruits is dead. Faith without fruits is dead. Glory be to God. We know that we receive grace by faith. We first need to believe that Jesus died for our sins and he is the son of God. And the finished works on the cross are sufficient to give us grace. And this grace is sufficient to wash away all our sins. All of this is faith-based. And we also need to believe that the Father sent his Holy Spirit to come and dwell with us so that when we pray in another tongue, we see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And we believe that we are not losing our minds. We are not getting crazy, but we are praying in tongues just as the Holy Spirit is enabling us to pray in tongues. We understand what is happening. So everything that we do in the kingdom of our Father is all faith-based. Which means you also accept the Holy Spirit by faith. You have to invite Him by faith. And He comes to stay with you by faith. And you get to walk with Him by faith. And we also expect that when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, he just does not come and sit and you remain the same. There has to be some change in you. There has to be some transformation in you. We expect your life to change. We expect the fruits of the Holy Spirit to manifest. We know that the fruits of the Holy Spirit are blessings that all Christians, all born again Christians, should be producing as the manifestation of a transformed life in Christ. This is what is expected of us. We are supposed to be transformed 
when the Holy Spirit comes into our lives. So if you have received the Holy Spirit or you have called upon Christ to be your Lord and Savior by believing that he died on the cross for you and he was raised from the dead by Jehovah and he seated in heaven at the right hand of the Father, but we do not see changes in you, your faith is dead. I know some of you are like, uh, isn't it faith without works dead? Faith without fruits is dead because the works that you do are supposed to bear fruits. Works that do not produce any fruits are worthless. If I wake up this morning and choose to go and preach the gospel and evangelize in town, the mission from coming home to go to town was a mission to go and serve the Lord. I was doing the works of the Lord towards town. But when I get to town and I get shy and I walk back, those are fruitless works because nothing came out of that trip to town. Now, we are expected to produce fruits from every activity that we do because we are called branches attached to Christ. Why are we connected to Christ? We are connected to Christ because there is an assignment on each and every one of us as what? As the body of Christ. So if we're the body of Christ, we've been given assignments as the Holy Spirit chooses for us to do the works. Some are prophets. Some are preachers of the gospel. Assignments given to us. Being a preacher of the gospel is not a title that you wear and stay in your house. Being a preacher of the gospel means you are sharing the good news of the kingdom of the Father to them. And that good news should be in someone's ears. You don't talk to yourself. You don't preach on the corner of the road and no one hears you. There has to be communication. You targeting individuals that are called on by the Father to know about the goodness of the Lord. And they get to hear you talk. Not you barking on the street side and nobody hears you, there is a need for your fruits to come from your works. So, if your faith does not bear any fruit, it is dead. Glory be to God. So, from the beginning, before we go deep, the Holy Spirit comes into us. He needs to transform us. Because the moment the Holy Spirit comes, you are taking the yoke of Christ that is light and easy. That should result in a character change in you. There has to be a character change in you. Glory be to God. And the character change has been identified by the Holy Spirit. Different translations identify them differently. Like the New American Bible references them as nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Well, other versions, like the faith doctrine reference, makes them twelve. Whichever way the Holy Spirit gave us the message, we'll take them home. Because whatever happens when the Holy Spirit comes, it's supposed to equip us to start doing something that Jehovah sent us to do. But for us to be able to do that works, there has to be a shift in our character. If you were a violent individual, very merciless, wherever you go, you meet people, Somebody's going to go home with a black eye. That happens when you are in the world. Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, something in you should change. You see, what we need to understand before we even look at this is, when you are called by the Lord to the kingdom, the process of you Accepting Christ as a savior, your savior, is not a symbol as you have the word and you are out. No. There is a lot of background work that went into the preparation for you to hear the word. The enemy has been working day in, day out to keep you away from salvation. 
So he had built strongholds in you. He has laid out a plan to surround you with non-believers. He has excommunicated you from them that have the faith in the Lord. He has put you in a place where you are not comfortable with going to church. You are not comfortable hanging with people who believe in the Lord. He has put you in a place where you are the faithest you can ever be to salvation. And Jehovah releases a word that brings about the crushing of every effort the enemy has put to keep you away from your salvation. So by the time somebody comes and tells you about Christ, a lot of bacon work has been done by the Lord, releasing you from the oppression that you faced under the enemy. By the time somebody says, do you love Jesus? And you say, yes. Know that the enemy has been squeezed the heart and has let go of you. And that is a preparation for where you're supposed to go. While you are still under his authority, there were certain characteristics, certain behaviors that made you uncomfortable among believers. Maybe you hated everyone. Maybe you are always grumpy. Maybe you always fight with everyone. Maybe you were impatient. Maybe you were just a scrooge, very stingy and not willing to help anyone. No generous at all. Maybe you just did not trust in anyone, even including Christ himself. Maybe you are just a rough individual pushing everyone in your way. Maybe you do whatever comes in your mind. You had no self-control whatsoever. You just behave like an animal. Maybe you just don't take care of yourself. That's what the enemy was framing you for. So that you fit the profile of them that do not love the Lord. But when the Lord comes into your life, he makes sure that whatever the enemy has been doing in keeping you away from your salvation gets to be broken. The link between the anger that the enemy had to keep you away from your salvation gets to be broken. And you get to be liberated from the qualities that kept you away from the Lord. And when you get liberated, the responsibility to change is now on you in cooperation with the Holy Spirit. When you take the yoke of Christ, when you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you are accepting a transformation in character to be gentle, to be kind. And we are expecting to see you doing something different in your life. Let's say before you were called into the kingdom of the Lord and before Christ became your Lord and Savior, you were a miserable individual, frustrated day in, day out. The moment the sun rises, yeah, good morning, yeah, good morning. You know, in such a life of mine, what good can come out of a morning? I don't see any good. It is very frustrating. And you have a list of all your problems in your life that you can put across to just dismiss anyone who says good morning to you. Just a good morning will attract a lashing out of complaints and cries and memories that you do not. That's you before Christ called you to the kingdom. But when the Holy Spirit comes, you need to believe that Christ has come to change your life. And your faith in Christ should mean that what Christ did, you are able to do. Who Christ was, you are able to be. And the Spirit of the Lord gets to show you who Christ was. Because if now you are in the kingdom and we still find you five years after being filled with the Holy Spirit, you are waking up complaining, murmuring, Ah, what good is in this life? There's COVID, there's whatnot, and there is all sorts of problems, and you know even the future itself is very uncertain. We don't expect you to do that because your faith is dead. If we do not see the fruits of the Holy Spirit in you, we expect a change in your speech. You wake up and say, glory be to God, this is the day that the Lord has made and I shall be glad in it. And you make an effort to be happy. You look into your life and find, what can I celebrate today 
I celebrate that I'm alive in Christ. I celebrate that my fridge is full of food. I celebrate that even my dogs are not barking all night long. I have had a good night's sleep. You celebrate that you have a job. Celebrate that you have a family that loves you. Celebrate that you have got a friend. That's the first translation. There should be joy in you. We should see you as a joyful individual. Somebody who has prayed to the Lord and say, Lord, save me. And the receiving of salvation should give you what? Joy. Because when you ask and you receive, there has to be the completion of joy. If you say, Christ, be my Lord and Savior, you are requesting Christ to be your Lord and Savior. And if he becomes your Lord and Savior, we should see the joy manifesting in your life because your first request as a child of the Lord has manifested. You ask the blood of Christ to wash away all your sins. And that gets up. We should find a measure of joy in you that your joy is made complete because you are receiving something from the Father. So if you are saying you are a man of faith, but we don't see joy in you, we see a lot of complaining, a lot of memory. Your faith is dead. You are not believing in the Christ who we know because the Christ we know came so that we can live a life in abundance, the full and overflow. Abundance of joy comes with Christ. So if we don't find that transformation, your faith is dead. If you were a very impatient person, in the morning, everyone in the house is on standby. By the time you wake up, everyone is waiting for you. They are terrified to be you to be the first person out of the house. Because when you get into the car, you drive, the children have to walk to school. Your wife or your spouse has to run behind the car chasing because you're impatient. That was then before Christ became your Lord. Because if you are born again and the Holy Spirit is in you and you're praying in tongues and we're still seeing your wife chasing your car towards the gate because she's late and you can't wait for them, your faith is dead. Should we see you pushing everyone, complaining that the queue is too long and I want to go and every, like you are the only one who's got important things to do? We should see a transformation in you. We should see your character riddled with patience. You are in a queue. An old individual comes and they are tired. A pregnant woman is there behind you. You say, please, can you come in front of me? Because... You are dealing with stuff that I'm not dealing with. Rather, you get saved first and I'll be saved. You are prepared to spend more time in a queue just to get someone who is dealing with challenges saved first before you. We should see that transformation. But if we still see you as impatient as you were when you're not born again, that faith is dead because the Christ we save has got a spirit whose fruits includes patience in it. So if you were Scrooge before you were born again, you would count every dollar that you have. And if a dollar is missing, a cent is missing, the children get beaten up. That was then before you were born again. When you found Christ as a Lord and Savior, you should be an individual who is able to share what you have. If you were looking at everyone in the world who is in lack as somebody lazy, somebody who's not willing to work, somebody who doesn't deserve help, somebody when they put their hand out for arms and you look at them and spit in their hands, there has to be a transformation when the Holy Spirit is in you because when the Holy Spirit is in you, the courage of Christ should be found in you. We should see you willing to share what you have with them that are in lack. You find someone struggling, you help them. You be able to obey the law of the Lord of loving your neighbor as yourself. Because if the faith in you does not bring about the loving of the neighbor as yourself, that faith is dead. There has to be that transformation that makes you look at your neighbor and think, I would love for them to feel the good life that I do have. So since they've just left their job, can we give them food? We might not have enough, but the little we have, can we share with them? Because we are loving our neighbors as ourselves. We should find that transformation. We should not find you slamming the doors and switching off the lights because the neighbors are knocking on the door and you are worried they are going to come and ask for something. We should see you responding to the call of the Lord. Give them that ask. 
Don't withhold your hand. Be generous. We should see generosity in place where Scrooge was walking. Where the miser was counting every dollar and keeping them locked up and staying hungry, we should see a generous individual who is able to love himself and love the neighbors as himself. We are expecting you to love the neighbors as yourself. We are not expecting you to love the neighbors more than yourself. We are expecting you to love the neighbors as yourself. We are not expecting you to take everything that you have in your house and give it to the neighbors and you stay hungry. The fruits of the Holy Spirit expects you to respect the laws of the Lord. We should see generosity that is paired with wisdom. Glory be to God. If you were somebody who went through a lot, the enemy webbed in you that every person that you've ever trusted in has disappointed you, has robbed you, has lied to you, has made your life a living hell. And they've made you unable to trust in anyone, unable to believe that there's goodness in the world. That was then before Jehovah called you to be his child. Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you should believe that a God who doesn't want anything from me except loving you is there and is faithful and is going to do what is right. And when you know that he's a faithful God and you want to be like him, you want the qualities of Jehovah in you, we find you believing in the Lord, trusting in him. And guess what? We need to see your trust in him manifesting in answered prayers. We should see you receiving prophecies that manifest and we should see the fruit of the prophecies in your life. We should see you asking and receiving. We should see you trusting in the Lord in the midst of waiting for receiving. We should see you celebrating receiving stuff that you haven't received. Despite having gone through a life where everyone is you have ever made disappointed you from your mother to your father to your uncle to your friends to your spouse to everybody else when christ comes there has to be that change when the holy spirit is in you there has to be that transformation to a faithful individual who also keep their word. They say, I'll be there tomorrow at 9 o'clock. And they show up at 9 o'clock. If they are late, they go pick up the phone and say, I'm going to be late by another 10 to 15 minutes, but I will be there. And they make an offer to show up. We should see that individual showing up, doing those things. There has to be that character transformation in you. Because if we still see you breaking promises, like there's a competition of breaking promises, when we see you not trusting anyone, Years after being born again, your faith is dead because you are not allowing the Holy Spirit, who you accepted by faith, to work in you and transform you into a patient and faithful individual. We expect a transformation in you. If your, your work of faith is no fruits, it is dead. There has to be that transformation. Glory be to God. If your faith has no works and does not produce fruits, it's dead too. There is a need for us to realize that the position we occupy in the kingdom is unique. We have been given the power to do marvelous things. We've been given authority to kick out demons out of our lives, out of our friends, out of people who are under oppression. But if you have that power and we don't see you using it for the benefit of them that require it, your faith is dead. We need to see something different. 
James says, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith, but there's no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it's not accompanied by action, it is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. Glory be to God. This is the second level of checking how alive your faith is. If you love the neighbor as yourself, if you've been compassionate to your neighbors, if you've done what is expected of you, when the Lord blesses you, He says, I bless you so that it can be a blessing. Why? Because you are a partaker in the Abrahamic blessing. Abraham was told you shall be what? A blessing after I've blessed you. And you, through the seed of Abraham, became a partaker in Abraham's blessing, which means when you get blessed, you are not blessed for your own consumption. You are also blessed to assist those whose faith is weak, cannot ask and receive. You are called to be generous. And if you are fighting the Holy Spirit in transforming into a generous individual, James says, can such faith save you? Of course, theologians are discussing now, isn't it that if you accept Christ, you are saved? Yes. James is not talking about saved from damnation. He's looking at the results of your position in the kingdom. We know that the highest level is occupied by them that sit at the table with the Father. Now, if there is a hierarchy because we hear Christ says when he talks about John, there's none born of a woman's choice, men's choice, was greater than John. Which means what? There is hierarchy in the kingdom of the Lord. Now, Jem is saying, shall your faith that makes you not love your neighbor as yourself get you saved? Judgment comes through Christ because he says, at an appointed time, I will judge your iniquities. And you not love your neighbor as yourself Makes you what? A sinner. Because you're broken. One of the big two. Love the Lord your God. And love your neighbor as yourself. So you find yourself not being saved from the calamities that come after breaking the laws of the Lord. That's what James is talking about. If you are disobeying the Lord, then the laws of prosperity cannot operate in your life because you are a rebellious individual and prosperity is only drawn to the obedient children of the Lord. So James is saying, you are not saved from your own problems. The problem that we are chasing you will continue chasing you because you cannot be snatched out of the poverty because prosperity still looks at you as a sinner who he can't work with. Sickness and disease are still drawn to you because you are operating in disobedience. The prophecy that was spoken into your life to give you life 
in abundance, to give you prosperity, to give you hope in the future, cannot manifest in your life because you're operating in disobedience. That's what James is talking about here. He's not talking about you being cast out of the kingdom because your faith doesn't have works. He's speaking about you suffering while in the kingdom of the Lord, not benefiting from your faith. You will struggle. James is saying it's not enough to say I believe in Jesus. I believe in the Lord. He says it's not enough. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even demons believe that and shudder. So do not say you say you believe in Christ is sufficient. There is your responsibility in the kingdom as a child of the Lord because you are now in the family business. You are now part of the body of Christ. You have a responsibility in the kingdom of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is working in you to transform you into an individual suitable to do the works of the Lord as part of the body of Christ. You are expected to operate as led by the Holy Spirit. That's why the children of the Lord are led by the Holy Spirit. The children of the Lord are led by the Holy Spirit. Now, if the Holy Spirit is supposed to lead you, it's supposed to lead you in what? Making the decisions that make your character manifest as the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit assists you in making decisions that make your character equal to the fruits of the Holy Spirit. What we are being told here is, if your mind is not governed by the Holy Spirit, your faith is dead. If your mind is governed by the flesh, you still have the wicked behavior that we had before Christ called you. Your faith is dead. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. And what is your hope in Christ? A transformation into the likeness of Jehovah. And Jehovah is not mean. Jehovah is not stingy. Jehovah is not impatient. Jehovah is not faithless. We expect you to be transformed into the nature of the Lord, the likeness of the Lord. That's what the Holy Spirit comes into. So if you are fighting that transformation, that makes you into the like to be able to behave like someone in the likeness of the Lord, we have a problem. Because as much as your spirit is alive, your flesh has taken reign of your mind and you are at law against Jehovah. You are an adversary to the kingdom of the Lord despite you speaking in tongues. Let's watch our behavior. Let's watch our behavior. Who are you in the kingdom of the Lord? What are you doing in the kingdom of the Lord? Are you waiting for salvation? And doing nothing? Glory be to God. We know that the transformation that you go through is meant to equip you to save the Lord. It's equipping you to be able to receive what Jehovah has spoken into your life. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, now about the gift of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray by mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus be cursed. No one 
can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And we know that when the Holy Spirit comes, he gives you the gifts to save the Lord. Now, there is a need for your transformation in preparation to receive the gifts of the Lord. If you are still a hardcore drunkard, a hardcore drug abuser, and you are supposed to serve as a priest, will the Holy Spirit give you a gift that sends you into ministry? We are told that there are different kinds of gifts by the same Spirit, and the Holy Spirit distributes them. These gifts are different and they are meant for the service of the Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is Jehovah who is working in us. Now we know some, there's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit that is given to us for the common good. When the Holy Spirit comes into you, he needs to transform you into a useful individual in the kingdom of the Lord. There has to be something about you that you can serve as a child of the Lord. There has to be some duty that you are serving as a body of Christ. Because Jehovah is a rewarder, a rewarder of them that seek him diligent, which means there has to be full cooperation of you. When the Holy Spirit is doing an operation in you, changing you, there has to be full cooperation in you because you are seeking Jehovah diligently, but allowing him to transform you, make you the person qualified for the job. To one, the Holy Spirit can give you a message of wisdom, to another, a message of knowledge. But it's still the same Holy Spirit who's giving you that. To another, faith in the Holy Spirit. To another, gift of healing by the same Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking different tongues. And to another, interpreting those tongues. Those gifts are supposed to equip you to serve a function in the kingdom of the Lord. And if we do not see you doing the works according to the gift that the Holy Spirit is giving you, your faith is dead because we are not finding the deeds that should give value to your faith. Glory be to God. So we know, just as we are, part of the body of Christ, we are now different parts of the body. We have different responsibilities according to what the Holy Spirit gives us. If you have faith, then you should have the Holy Spirit work in you, transform you to become a different individual. And after that, we should see you receiving gifts from the Holy Spirit and you being able to function in the kingdom of the Lord as part of the body of Christ. Because we are all baptized by the same Spirit so that we form one body. Whether you are pink, blue, a Jew, a gender, we are all serving the same God and the same Holy Spirit is given us. So there is no excuse that, well, I am black and since I am black, we know we do not operate in the prophetic. No, no, no. If the Holy Spirit has chosen you to be a prophet of the Lord, it's because he has worked in you and he has qualified you to give you that gift of prophecy and you are expected to do the works of the Lord by, by being a prophet of the Lord. But if we do not see you being a prophet of the Lord, but you are trying to become a John of some sort, running away from the Lord, your faith is dead. And you should accept the responsibility that Jehovah has given you. Some are being ineffective in the kingdom of the Lord, not because the Holy Spirit has not transformed them, but has transformed them. There is a change. We see that part of transformation being taken care of. But we are seeing the part of accepting the responsibility not taken care of because all of us want to be prophets of the Lord and none of us want to be evangelists. We become fruitless because we are not prepared to take the office that Jehovah has given us.
We all desire one kind of an assignment. Paul says, If the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. Whatever you refuse that Jehovah sent you to do does not eliminate you from being a part of the body of Christ. You are still expected to function in that position that Jehovah has given you because that's what you are expected to do. We need to remember that Jehovah is an all-knowing God and the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Lord. He carries the wisdom of the Lord and what you're supposed to do is to happen because Jehovah has chosen you to do what you need to do. And we've been placed in the church in hierarchy. Some are apostles, some are prophets, some are teachers, some do miracles. A whole lot of work we do. Some have got gifts of healing. Some for helping, some for guidance, some are just there to pray in tongues in the city on behalf of everyone. But we cannot all be prophets, we cannot all be apostles, we cannot all be teachers, you know, we cannot all be doing miracles. We need to accept that we've been chosen by the Lord and the office we're supposed to serve in we bear fruits in them because if we do not see any fruits from your faith, that faith is dead. You might be full of the Holy Spirit. You might have the gift of the Holy Spirit, but we don't see works. That faith is dead because we don't see the fruits. And Christ says, if there is a branch that doesn't bear any fruit, we need to prune that branch. And if you think because you've been given an assignment by the Lord that you don't want, you want to cut yourself away from Christ and do your own works, Christ tells you there's no branch that can produce its own fruits apart from Him. You don't want to be pruned? Do as you are expected to do. Save the Lord because He's a rewarder. He says, the answers do not matter like how I treat the corn. Why? Because he says a worker is worth his wage. He will provide for the works. The service that you provide, Jehovah, is a reward of them. He gives you a salary for what you have done. He gives you a wage for what you have done because he says a worker is worth his wage. That is Christ saying that a worker is worth his wage. So in that office, you have found yourself stuck in a place and you are not growing. You are not prospering. And you are full of the Holy Spirit. Look at your works. Do you qualify to receive a word from the Lord? Or you have that lazy son who says, I will do the work and does not do the work. We are called to be children of the Lord who accept who Jehovah is. So today, watch your, the fruits in your life. Have you been fruitful in your life? Have you bought any fruit to the kingdom? Have you produced the fruit that are in line with Christ? Because if you are a child of the Lord, then we know Christ is the vine and you are a branch and whatever is supposed to produce is what Christ wants you to produce. For who? For Jehovah because he's the vine and owner. Glory be to God. Let's look at our lives. Let's see if we are producing fruit from our faith so that we can get the advantage from our mistakes and improve as Jehovah directs us, as we obey the Lord, as we serve Him, as we do as we are expected to do as part of the body of Christ because it's our responsibility to produce fruit, good fruit. And we shall be known by the fruits we produce that we are children of the Lord. We will only produce good fruit because the Holy Spirit who leads us produces good fruits in us because he's the one who governs our minds. He's the one who makes us make the right choices. And when we make a number of choices, good choices, we start making the right decisions. And we start making a lot of good decisions. We start being wise individuals. And when we become wise individuals, we are known as them that are capable of leaving our wealth to our children's children because our character now depicts the fruit of the Holy Spirit and our works depicts of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we are seen as those that produce good fruit in Jesus Christ. Christ's mighty name. Let us pray. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the waiting season, a waiting time, word of empowerment, a word that raises us up to the place where we can be rewarded for saving Jehovah for you, saying a worker is worth his weight. Thank you so much, Jehovah, for showing us that 
we are expected to be fruitful and we're supposed to produce good fruit and you've shown us the way to produce good fruit and you've shown us the way to move from where we used to be and be the children of promise the children blessed by the most high god the children who have authority the children who have the power to have dominion and produce fruit as Jehovah determines them too in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Thank you, Father Lord. We bless your holy name. We glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go to sleep, Father, we ask you to bless us tonight with a comfortable night. No nightmares, no tossing, no turning, no struggles. But waking up tomorrow, refreshed, ready to produce fruit in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Where we are struggling, Father, your word says, where we are weak, you become our strength. So may you strengthen us, Father, so that we are good at producing fruit, for we desire to produce good fruits. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Thank you so much, my brothers and sisters, for coming to our prayer session today. We hope to see you tomorrow at the same time where we receive a wedding season, a wedding time, a word of empowerment. We love you so much. Good night and bye-bye.